Hi friends, it's Shay. Welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to show you guys how to do well in biology. So although I am a health science student, I feel like I've learned a lot of things over the years on how to do better in biology courses. In high school biology 11 and 12, I think I got 98% and 96%. And then in university, I've taken three biology courses and two of them I got A pluses and one of them I got an A. I think the tips that I'll be sharing with you will be useful whether you're barely passing biology or you're just looking to do better than how you're doing right now. So this video will be split up into six sections, what you should be doing before class, what you should do during class, how you should take notes, um, how you should be doing your homework, how you should be studying, and a bonus tip right at the end. So make sure to watch this video all the way through to get the most out of it. So one habit that I didn't know before in high school, but I started to pick up in university is to preview lectures. So previewing can be either just flipping through the slides that your prof gives you or looking at the handout that your teacher gives you. I highly recommend doing that, but if you need a lot more context, then I would skim over the textbook or watch a YouTube video on the introduction to the topic that you'll be studying. I think it's really important that when you go into class, whatever topic that you're learning is not the first time that you're seeing it. Biology is vocabulary heavy and concept heavy, so if you go into class not knowing anything about the subject, you will get lost in the details. And that brings me to my next point, which is to identify the learning objectives. So my first year biology prof was like, the best prof I've ever had. She always split up the lecture, one hour lecture into three sections and she outlined the key learning objectives for each of those sections. And in my other courses, this isn't always the case. So you might have to do this on your own where you skim through the lecture slides and see what the big concepts are. So moving on to what you should do during class. First, you should be asking questions if you don't understand something. And if you don't feel comfortable with doing that, you can always note down what you're struggling with on the handout or the lecture slides. And this is really important because when you encounter problems in real life, a lot of us just want to like avoid the problem as much as possible. But when it comes to biology, that problem will end up on the exam. So if you don't understand something, it's really important that you ask right away or to note down what you don't understand. So then you can ask the prof through the email or you can ask your teacher after class. Um, you can also ask your classmates or your friends to try and understand things. I know I get super anxious talking to the prof or even asking questions in lectures. So I usually hold off on asking my question until the end of class or I just go to their office hours to ask. And the second thing you should be doing during class is to only write down things that are not provided to you. So in high school, I remember we always had like handouts or we were assigned um, pages on the textbooks. And then in university, we usually just have lecture slides posted online. And it kind of connects to my point earlier about previewing lecture slides beforehand, because when you're in lecture, you don't want to be reciting every single thing that they're saying because a lot of the time your prof or your teacher will be reading off whatever they provided you but i find that the examples and the analogies that the profs provide actually help with enhancing my learning and i'm not trying to spend the whole lecture trying to understand every little thing because i understood most of it before the lecture even started so we're going to move on to note taking so note taking is a very like personalized thing i'm not going to tell you what style of notes you should take but i will give you some general tips that are applicable to any note taking style that you have so the first tip is to not transcribe the content. I know that it's really tempting to like get your studying done as fast as possible, but your note taking process should be kind of another part of you understanding the concepts. So if you do understand the concepts, you will be able to put it in your own words and not have to transcribe whatever is on the handout or lecture slide. And I recommend doing this instead of just working off of the annotated notes from lectures because most of the time, lecture notes are really wordy. And profs and teachers do this because they have to make sure that their content 
is understandable to the general person. If you need a lot more examples or if you need it to be explained in a more concise way, you need to make it concise in your own notes. I find that whenever I just transcribe notes, I end up forgetting about it and when I read over my notes, I don't understand it because it's not in my own words and it's not laid out in a way that I understand it. And my next tip is to supplement your notes. So I said earlier that you should be able to understand your own notes and certain topics that they introduce you in class are harder to grasp than others. And when you have topics like this, you need to go into your textbook or onto YouTube to learn more about it. For me, I've spent like a whole afternoon trying to watch YouTube videos on ECGs because in class, I just did not understand it. And I'm sure that happens to you too. Instead of being frustrated and giving up, you need to go look for other resources to supplement your notes with. My third tip is to focus on the core concepts and then expand from there. So I said earlier that you need to be outlining your learning objectives. So after you do that, you know what the key takeaways from each lectures are. I think that if you go through your lectures in a chronological order, you'll see that it's not formatted exactly the way that it should be. Like your notes do not have to go from top of the page down. Um, you could do mind maps or other ways of note taking that makes it visual and easier to make connections between the different concepts you're learning. I think this tip is really helpful if you tend to get lost in the details. I think I had this problem in first year bio when I was introduced to so many topics that I got really lost in the details and then I lost sight of why we're even learning these little details for. So when you know the core concept, you're able to connect all the little details to the core concepts. And most of the time, your exams are going to be testing you on the core concepts and not the minor details. The minor details are probably to distinguish an A student from an A plus student but the core concepts will determine your letter grade, basically. So the fourth tip is to remember that you should not be writing too much in your notes. So this one tip I learned from my TA in first year is that one hour of lecture should only equate to about one page of notes. And I understand that some lectures are heavier than others, but in general, if you understand the concepts and you're writing it in your own words, you should be able to write it in such a concise way that it fits all onto one page. And this is really helpful when you're studying because you're not flipping through so many pages of notes. And when you're used to seeing your notes often, you would kind of understand where certain concepts are in your own notes. And I find that when I'm taking an exam and there's like a key word in the question, I think about, oh, this was on page two on this column of that page. And I start to remember like diagrams that might've been in that area or concepts that were related to that area. And that also helps with my test taking. And my last tip for this section is to know your diagrams. Diagrams will always end up on the exam. Depending on your prof, you may or may not have to memorize the diagrams, but if you're able to read a graph and explain what's going on, if you get something similar on an exam, then you would be able to interpret the graph easily. If you're studying anatomy, for example, then you will need to know your diagrams. So when you come across a diagram on your textbook or your handout or your lecture slides, make sure to spend some time on interpreting it and writing down what the graphs even mean. And you should be able to go from the meaning of the graph to actually making the graph itself. So we're gonna move on to the homework section. So my first tip for this section is that you need to do your homework after you understand the core concepts. Generally, the profs aren't giving you homework for busy work. You want to actually use the homework to your advantage. In university, bio homework is usually just like 10 or 20% of your final grade, which in the grand scheme of things is very, very small. I've taken a statistics course where one exam was worth 70% of my final mark. So comparing 20% to 70%, that's basically nothing. I know it's easy to want to get that full 10 or 20% of your mark by just using your notes and just answering the questions that way, but try to attempt the homework after you have a good understanding of the core concepts 
and you can easily just add on to your answer later on by looking at your notes. I think this is really important because instead of focusing on that 10% of your final grade, you're using homework as a study tool for that 90% or 80% that is going to be made up of your exams. And my second tip for this section is to note down why you got certain things wrong. If you're anything like me, you probably get pretty discouraged when you mark your own homework or do a practice quiz and you got certain questions wrong. I learned that I have to really embrace my mistakes and understand why I made those mistakes so I won't make the same ones on the exam. I know it feels bad to look at those X's and be like, wow, I'm so dumb, but I assure you, if you actually look at the things that you got wrong and you identify why you got those things wrong, you will do better on the exam. I've had a lot of practice exam questions or homework questions actually just end up on the exam because it's so hard for profs to be making up new questions all the time. Like there's a point where you just run out of questions you can ask. So make sure that you are doing the practice questions and if you get things wrong, look at it, write down why you got those things wrong and when you're studying later on, you can look at the questions that you got wrong first and study off of those questions. And if you get it wrong again, you need to go and supplement your notes or ask someone else or figure it out before the exam. And now we're gonna move on to the studying section. So for me, note-taking and doing my homework is a part of my studying, but this is not the only studying I do. I see lots of people make amazing notes and that's great, but you need to take it further and actually do something with those notes. So I wanted to share some of the scientifically proven ways to study better. The first one is repetition. So I don't know if you've heard of the curve of forgetting. I'll put it right here. But basically, repetition is important to beat that curve and to make sure that you're always remembering things in the long run. For example, seven hours of studying in a week could look like doing one hour every single day versus doing seven hours on the last day before the exam. And doing the one hour every single day is going to be more effective because you're not gonna forget about it all in one day. You will always be reviewing those topics, so you will be more familiar with it over time. The second way is to practice active recall. So active recall is just a way for you to remember by testing yourself and making yourself recall the information and retrieve that information, which helps you consolidate everything in your head. I think it's really easy to get to the point of studying if you don't have good study habits where you look at the information in your notes and you're like, yeah, I'm like familiar with it. I think I can do well on the exam. And then you go into the exam and you realize that you didn't actually know the information. And this is the difference between recall and recognition. If you keep rereading and rewriting your notes, you're probably going to recognize the concepts that you're seeing because you're seeing it often but you might not be able to recall the information, which is what an exam would be doing for you. The third method is to use the Leitner system. So this is basically a way for you to study where you review the information that's hardest to you often, and then if something comes easy to you, you won't review it as often. So I'll put a diagram of what it is here, but an easy way to practice this system is to just use Anki, which will automatically show you cards that you find difficult more often and show you cards that you find easy less often. So the fourth thing kind of relates to active recall, but just do practice tests. I find that when I'm studying for an exam and I run out of time to learn all of the tiny details, I just move on to doing the practice test because I'm most likely gonna learn more by looking at what the exam is going to be like instead of trying to memorize every little thing. The practice test will give you an idea of what you don't know. And since the practice test will most likely target the core concepts, if you get certain things wrong on the practice test, you can go back to your notes and review the core concepts, go supplement it with a YouTube video or something so you understand these core concepts. So the fifth thing is to make meaningful connections with the thing that you're learning. So I like to work with acronyms when I have to memorize a bunch of things 
or I'll make up a story that includes all of the key words. So for example, when I take biochem courses and I have to memorize a bunch of proteins, I try to use the protein names as like people and make up a story of what they do. And if you make the story funny or so weird, it'll make it much easier to remember. And the last tip for this section is to teach others. So in first year, I had a study partner and we would stay after classes and just test each other and teach each other concepts. This is probably the main thing that helped me get an A plus in biology because when I'm teaching other people, I can clearly see when I don't understand things or if they try to clarify with me and I can't help them at all, it's clear that I don't know the subject that well. So if you can get into a class group chat, I suggest you do that and just ask, hey, like I'm looking for one person to work with. And that will help you with just finding a study buddy. And if you find that the person is distracting, then I would go break up with the person and go find another study buddy. So the final section is the bonus tip, which is that you need to be taking care of your physical and mental health. Even if you follow every single tip that I gave in this video, if you aren't caring for your physical or mental health, you're not gonna do well in the long run. Although I'm not a doctor, I know that generally people need enough sleep, eat balanced meals, have a support system, and to have movements in their day. But that is a whole other video. What I'm saying is, is that you can't sacrifice taking care of your mental and physical well-being just to study. You're probably going to be better off getting extra sleep than to be cramming in those 3 a.m. cramming sessions. I literally sacrificed all of these things. I didn't sleep enough. I barely got sleep. I'm pretty sure I only slept like five hours a day. I was over exercising. I was always eating cup ramen and not enough vegetables and fiber. <laughs> And I sacrificed all of these things. And even though I did well, at the end of second year, I was burning out. And after going to counseling and unlearning a bunch of unhealthy habits that I had from first year, in my third and fourth year, I was getting the same grades that I was in first and second year, except my mental and physical health is so much better. So what I'm trying to say is that you don't need to be suffering and hating yourself and sacrificing your health to get better grades. You really don't need to do that. So that was my last tip for this video. Thank you so much for watching until the very end. If you got to this point, thank you. <laughs> As always, you will see my next video on Wednesday and I hope you have a sunny day.